Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. Now this video is going to be about us pouring a very large concrete slab. And it just so happens that it's in December here in Maine, so it's really cold out too as we're pouring this slab. It's actually below freezing when we got started here. But before we get into that, if you're new to this channel, my name's Mike Day. Uh, I talk about all kinds of things related to concrete. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. Hit the little bell notification. I come out with a couple videos a week about concrete things, trying to teach you guys to learn how to work with concrete, how to pour concrete, and how to finish concrete. So this slab is, a, is about a 5,000 square foot concrete slab we're pouring here. And as you can see, we're using a pump truck, and we're just what we call dangle pumping the concrete to where we need it, which really makes it easy putting the concrete right, right where we need it. So the the pump truck cost us about $850 to get here, but it makes up for so much time and labor putting it in the right place. So it's it's really not that big of a deal for us to spend $850. Bucks. Now, as you can see, this slab is about 75 feet wide. It's 55 feet deep is the middle part, that big square part. And there's a little piece up top there where we started that juts out from that. And there's another piece over here to the left that you can't really see on the screen yet that juts out from that to make it up, up to about a 5,000 square foot slab. And we got about seven loads of concrete coming here today. So, you know, when we attack a big slab like this, when, when we think about pouring a slab like this, at least my thoughts are, okay, so what's going to be the easiest way to pour it? number one but also what's going to be the easiest way to finish this thing too we got to put power trials on it and so it all plays it all works together when when i'm thinking about pouring bigger slabs like this so the first thing we do is you know we'll start up on an end and hopefully work our way back towards uh the closest part of the of the slab to the concrete truck but it wouldn't really matter if we're using a dangle pump like this. We could start any way we want. So we just chose to start up on that upper end today. And that's where we're going to have to start finishing the slab too. So, you know, we had to make sure we could get a, a truck out there, a pickup truck with the power trials in it. And it just so happens on this site, we can drive all the way around this thing. So we're waiting for that second truck to mix up. Unfortunately, the driveway wasn't big enough to get two concrete trucks side by side, which is normally the, the way we like to pump big slabs like this. So we have to back in one truck, dump him out, you know, let him get out of the way, and then we back in the, the next truck. So it slows the process down a little bit, but it won't be too bad. So we're pouring, we're starting over there on the right side of this, this big square piece. It's actually kind of like a big rectangle. It's not a perfect square. And we're going to take out a, a strip. We'll call it a strip all the way across the slab. That's about 14 or 15 feet wide. And the reason we chose that width is because that's about the width of our straight edge. So we'll probably go around, that's a 14 foot straight edge right there, you can see. So we'll make that that strip we're pouring about 15 feet wide and that just allows us it allows us to do a couple things first you know it controls the the strip of the concrete that's going down so when we go to finish it we know just what section we need to finish if all the trucks don't dry at the same time but it also allows us when we screed this thing only have to screed 15 feet at a time you know, if the concrete's really high or really low, we don't have to do a, a ton of work trying to, to level the concrete off because we're only going 15 feet. So this thing, this slab so happens to have a ton of pipes. This is going to end up being an apartment building. I don't know if you can tell, but there's two inches of styrofoam down under the slab. It's got wire mesh down, and then it's got radiant heat tubes tied to the wire mesh. So it's going to be six different apartments. That's why there's so many pipes in this thing. There's six different bathrooms. There's six kitchens. You know, there's bedrooms. There's hallways. There's all that kind of stuff. And I don't know if you, some of you guys might know this, but I have a, a course, a concrete slab course, that actually teaches you how to set up a slab like this, how to pour it, how to finish it. 
So if, if any of you guys watching this are interested in learning how to do your own concrete slabs, I would highly recommend that course. That's down in the description below for the link for that. You could check that out. But it teaches you how to do small slabs, you know, down to like a for a shed, a small garage slab, big garage slab, or even a larger slab like this. It's all the basics are pretty much the same. So you can learn all that from that course if you want. So as you can see, we're we're shooting our grades, our wet pads, and we're taking out about 14 foot sections of that strip at a time. And we're pulling the concrete towards you know the area that doesn't have concrete. So if we are high, we can just pull it into that empty area. If we're if we're low, then we'll bring the pump back in there and pump a little more concrete into that section. We're all, what we're also trying to do is maintain a wet edge, kind of like when you're painting as we're pouring this concrete. Over there where you can see to the right where the guy's bull float in there, you can just see the bull float. You know, that that edge, if it sits there too long, it's going to start setting up on us because we got accelerator in the concrete, we got hot water in the concrete, and we don't want to leave that edge sitting there too long or it's going to start getting hard. So we'll pour the strip down going from right to left. And then as you can see, he brought the, the pump back there, the pump hose. And now he's going back down that, that edge, making another strip while we're down the other end straight edging. So that's kind of how we attack a slab like this. We'll do it in these sections and we'll just keep working our way from one end to the other until the slab's done. And that's generally the way we do slabs. That's the way I was taught to do them years ago, no matter how big they are. This one's a 5,000 square foot slab, like I said, so it's a pretty good size slab. But I mean, we've done them, I've done them in the past before 10,000, 15,000, 50,000 square feet, and we always attack them the same way. Now, obviously the wider they are, if this thing was say 200 feet wide by, by 200 feet deep, then Hopefully you got more people, number one, and you're a little bit faster pouring. But it's a little bit harder to maintain that wet edge on a slab like that sometimes. So sometimes you will get what we call a, you know, a harder edge, and it just makes it a little bit different, difficult to screed off from. So you just need to be more careful that way. Um, but as far as this one goes, this, this one's not too, too wide, so it's not too bad. And you can see as soon as he gets a section pumped out, we got, we got one guy there kind of puddling, kind of knocking it down, raking the concrete around, and then I shoot a wet pad, and then we jump right on it, start screeding it with two guys screeding and one guy puddling and trying to get it leveled out just as fast as we can to keep things moving. We want to try to get this slab in as fast as we can so when we go to finish it, the concrete dries fairly evenly and we're not waiting on one section a long time while the other section's drying up. So it's important to have you know enough guys to do something like this. I called in some extra guys, some extra help, because as you know, there's three of us. There's me, Darren, and Luke is, is my crew. And then I called in uh, some guys that we network with, some other guys that do concrete for themselves. So I got two guys here from another crew helping. And then I got another two guys. You know, one guy does foundations, pours foundations, walls. But he hires us to do his floors. So I got him and one of his workers here from another crew. So there's, there's kind of three different crews here, including mine, helping pour this thing. And when we have larger floors like this, we, we like to network together. Because, I mean, I don't pour floors this big every day if I did then I'd have more guys as my employees. But since I don't, you know, I don't need seven guys. The three of us can handle most of the work that we do. So it makes it nice to be able to network with other people. How many of you guys out there that do concrete network with other people like this, other concrete companies, uh, foundation guys, floor guys? Do you have guys you can call? And just, uh, you know, as long as you schedule it enough in advance that they can come help you for a couple hours? Like these guys will just help for the pour. They'll come here and pour. This took us to pour this. We started at seven. We were done pouring by like 9.30. So it was about 70 yards. 
So we had it all poured in two and a half hours. I mean, and so they help us pour, and then they take off and go back to what you know, whatever they were gonna do for today. We're also using 4,000 psi concrete today, which is what we normally use in the winter time. And like I said, it's got hot water. It's got 160 degree water in it. It's got two bags. They're 10 yard loads, so they got two bags of calcium chloride flake calcium that are 50 pounds each so 100 pounds of calcium chloride in each load to help it dry a little faster and then pouring on the styrofoam is going to help a lot too and as you'll see later in the video there's going to be one other thing we do to help this stuff dry faster so make sure you stick around for that I'm going to show you that so there goes the guy holding the end of the hose you know he pours out that strip and then he comes back and he starts another 15 foot strip wide keeping that keeping that wet edge we don't want that edge drying up on us too fast while we're over there finishing that one bay straight edging it takes a while when you got a bunch of pipes like this going around all these pipes making sure the, the concrete stays nice and flat and level around the pipes um, you don't want little humps or little dips around all the pipes so you got to make sure you screed around them and then you got to stop and then you got a mag float around them. The mag float is that little tool we got in our pockets there that helps smooth the concrete off. So you guys don't know what a mag float is. We also use it to to smooth the edges off when we're when we're magging the edges there where the form is. I got one guy here, you can see him right there on the right. He's what his responsibility is is keeping the form straight as we're pouring them. So he's checking all the braces. There's a, we got a string line running around the top of the boards. He's checking the string to make sure everything's nice and straight. And then he's also, you can see he's got his mag in his hand. He's magging the edge for us, smoothing the edge out so we can use that to go by when we straight edge. You can see I'm right there. Now I have the grade stick in my hand and I'm shooting a wet pad. And then we just strike the floor with the straight edge from wet pad to the part of the floor that we already screeded. So, and this is how we do things. I mean, we don't, we're not using, for you guys that have watched a lot of my videos, we're not using the, the Vibra screed here that the Marshalltown Shockwave screed I have because there's just so many pipes. And for us, it's just easier to hand screed around all these pipes than it is to try to vibrascreed around all these pipes. Now you, you can, you can definitely vibrascreed around all of them if you want, but I don't know, it's just the way we choose to do it when we have a slab with a lot of pipes like this. If this slab had, you know, half of these, less of these pipes, we'd probably be using the vibrascreed here today instead of bending over and kickscreeding. We're getting down towards the end here. You know, it just, it's just, it's all a process. You know, it's just, you keep working your way one truck at a time. One truck at a time is how we, we talk about it. So get that truck dumped out, get the next one in, get it dumped out. We try not to get too far ahead of ourselves. So the guy holding the, the pump hose there with the dangle pump, you know, the, it doesn't do any good to get two loads of concrete pumped out if the guy's screeding away back on the on the truck before that you know you might as well just stop the pour real quick let the guy screed and get caught up and then just continue on you can see the guy bull floating there he's uh pretty much just gonna bull float the whole thing and keep up with the guy screeding i mean that's a whole job in itself I can remember one day we did a big slab. It was about 50,000 square feet. It was 1,000 yards we poured. It was actually at uh, the L.L. Bean uh, new facility in Freeport, Maine. Some of you guys have probably heard of L.L. Bean. And my whole job that day, it was when I was pretty young, was just, just bull floating. I was just trying to keep up with the guys screeding. They were screeding so fast. So I bull floated all day. It took us six hours to pour that 1,000 yards. And I bull floated for six hours and... Boy, my back was some sore after that. So I changed the angle of the camera here a little bit. You can see we're getting down towards the, the last third of the slab. And you can see that little piece that kind of juts out there. That's what it looked like on the other end when we started too. We had another piece just like that. 
you can see the edges here are about a foot thick and you know they they're up about two feet wide then they taper up into the slab which is about a four to five inch thick slab so this thing really sucked up a lot of concrete we actually formed this up about a month ago so these forms have been here for about 30 days we came and we formed it all up we drove in our pins we set it to grade we got it all square and the reason we had to do that so far in advance was because the plumbers needed the forms up to measure all their plumbing off them to make sure they got all the bathrooms in the right spots um, you know all that that radiant heat tubing in the right spot so they needed the forms up to do that we've had to come back twice since then before the pour and double check our forms to make sure things didn't move because when we first put them in the ground wasn't really frozen and then we got some nights where the grounds and froze and then we got some real hard rain the ground unthawed so we had to make sure nothing moved and then they uh, they rented a ground heater if you can see that kind of like that reddish orange thing that trailer kind of thing in the back there to the left that's actually a ground heater and it's got these hoses all the kinds of hoses that come out of that thing it's kind of like a furnace it pumps hot water through it and then the hot water goes through those hoses and what they needed to do was they laid those hoses all across the ground to unthaw the ground before they put that styrofoam down and that that's what they did to keep the frost out of the ground because like i said it's december up here in maine so all the nights it's always below freezing at nighttime and sometimes during the day it stays below freezing so they were running into a little trouble with frost so the guy had to rent one of those ground heaters and what we did i don't think i'm going to show it on this video probably on the next one but what we did when it came time to finish this slab we hooked those hoses that had hot water coming through them right to the manifold of all those radiant heat tubes and the manifold is on this screen it's over there to the right those kind of like those pinkish tubes sticking up through the slab that's what they call the manifold so we could hook the the ground heater right up to that manifold and it would pump warm water through the slab while we were finishing it to help it dry so that was a big bonus for us because it really didn't dry you know it wasn't really drying very good at first it was so cold out today and this thing didn't get any sun to it because the sun's now so low that it doesn't even really come up above those trees so we're trying to finish this concrete and it's 28 29 30 degrees outside and the concrete just doesn't generate enough heat itself as it's drying to dry very good it was cold out this morning too when we started like it was probably i think it was around 18 19 20 degrees when we started pouring this thing this morning We're getting down to almost that last truck now. We'll get that pumped out, get that screeded. And you know what we hope for is to get this thing all in, screeded, bull floated, and, and then just have a little bit of time to relax before we have to go back and start finishing it. That's what happens generally on, on big slabs, especially in the summertime. You know, you get to where you have to start sending guys back to finish before you're even done pouring. That used to happen all the time when I first started working for, you know, another outfit. This is where I started out. We was always sending guys back to finish because the slabs were so big, and then you start getting a little shorthanded on the pour. That didn't happen here. This concrete didn't dry anywhere near fast enough to have to do that. See how easy that pump makes it. I mean, we could have drove concrete trucks all around this thing and then just shooted it and pulled the concrete. But honestly, that would have took longer, even with all these guys. And then everybody would have been more tired just trying to pull the concrete around. I definitely don't mind spending a few extra dollars for a pump truck if it makes the job easier. Yeah, we're getting right into that last section and we're down to our last truck you know where when i came and shot my grades and figured the concrete i try figuring it as close as i can but where those edges are so thick sometimes it's hard to figure that 
and get it really accurate. So you kind of take a guess. You don't want to have to get down to where you're almost done and then figure the concrete and then wait for a balance. These, it took about 40 minutes for these concrete trucks to get here from the concrete plant. So I wouldn't have wanted to have waited 40 minutes for the, for the balance load, what we call the balance load to show up after we got done dumping the rest of the concrete. So I ordered what I thought would do the whole slab. And as it turned out, it, it worked out perfect. The, the concrete truck ran out right about there, right where the guy is right now with the hose and the hose, he ran out. But we had enough concrete in the pump truck to just finish that last little piece right there at the end. So we didn't end up wasting any concrete at all. And we didn't have to call for a balance load. So it, it's just luck. It turned out good for us. That, that's how it worked out. And now we got everybody there screeding and puddling on that last bay. That makes it easy. So again, guys, if you want to learn how to do slabs like this, I got that course down in the description. Check that out. I think it would be well worth the money if, you, if you're looking to learn how to do something like this. Um, I got... I'm in the works. I'm making my, my course on, you know, how to start a concrete company like this, how to start your own business, whether you're working for somebody else already or maybe you have a job somewhere else that doesn't have anything to do with concrete, but you like, you like dabbling in concrete and thinking of starting your own business. So I'm working on a course like that for you guys. That'll be coming out here fairly shortly. And, uh, I'll try to make it as thorough as I can for you guys so you know just how to start, how to how to estimate jobs, how to invoice, how to how to get work. I mean, how do you even get work? Um, I, I can help you with that. I get more work than I can even take. So that course, I'm going to make it as thorough as I can. So for any of you guys wanting to start your own business, just keep keep looking for that. And I'll try to give you as much notice as I can when I have that done and when that's coming out. But again, guys, you know, thanks for watching. I, I appreciate it. You guys subscribe if you haven't subscribed and uh, stay updated with all my videos. Hit the like button that helps my videos uh, in YouTube so it gets out to more people if you guys like and comment and I'll see you on the next one.